Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Collectibles Corner. This is the show where we sit in this corner of my bedroom and we just talk about collectibles. And boy howdy am I excited for today's episode because we're talking about something that I have been collecting for practically my entire life before I even knew that collecting was even a thing when I was a kid. I used to buy these all the time. We're talking about plushies, stuffed animals, plush toys, pretty much anything that is stuffed and you can hold and all that stuff and is soft to the touch. Anything like that is fair game for this episode. Some people might call them stuffed animals, like I said. I, for one, like to call them plush toys or plushies or something like that. Uh, every kid when they were younger had, you know, a stuffed animal or something that they loved, and I was no different. I had a ton of these stuffed animals, toys. It was mainly animals, though. I was really more into stuffed animals, though I did have a couple of characters, uh, like Mickey Mouse here, as well as T-Bone from Clifford the Big Red Dog. I didn't have a Clifford, I had T-Bone. He was not my favorite character from that show, but apparently I had him when I was younger. I don't know where that came from. I was really big into the Webkins line of plush toys. I loved that game as a kid. If you didn't, don't know what Webkins is, it's an online thing where you'd buy a physical stuffed animal and it would come with a little code. You'd go to the Webkins website, enter that code, and you could name your pet and play with it in a virtual reality type of sense, a virtual world, if you will. It was really awesome. I had quite a few of these Webkins toys and still do, as you can see. I don't remember specifically what my first like plush toy was uh, from when I was a child. I do remember though having this giant sized stuffed elephant that you're seeing on the screen right now. Still have it to this very day. Uh, it's huge. Uh, it was pretty big to a younger child, but even just looking at it now, it's, it's pretty big. I've had a lot more stuffed animals in my life. I, at one point, I probably had over a hundred of them, but you know, as of growing up and moving on to bigger and better things in terms of collectibles, I have donated quite a few of them, uh, sold them, sold a lot of them off at yard sales primarily, but I've kept a lot of the ones that I've had uh, since I was a child. I haven't got rid of all of them, but a few of them have unfortunately left the collection. And to be quite honest, I don't buy a lot of stuffed animals anymore. I kind of got out of that when I was in middle school, starting middle school. I thought, ew, that's that's dumb. Why would I want to do that? But you know, look at me now. I'm surrounded by plastic figures and Blu-rays and so many different things. I don't know why stuffed animals would be any different for me. I just don't really buy them that much anymore. Um, I still, like like I said, I still have a fair amount in my collection, but in all honesty, I don't buy a lot anymore. Uh, I mainly just buy ones that I think are cool or that have a specific story tied along with them or someone persuaded me to buy it. So throughout the rest of this episode, since I've already talked a bit about my history with plush toys and all that kind of stuff, and I've showed you some video footage of some of the ones I still have in, have in my collection. Uh, I'm going to show you all some of my specific favorites in the collection. Each one of these has a story that goes along with them uh, and where I got them or some kind of nostalgic connection and these ones for sure will never leave my uh, collection no matter how much my mom says I, I need to stop uh, collecting toys and be more focused on my future. Screw you mom, these are never leaving. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love you, Mom. So these are not in any particular order, per se. No chronological order, no order of nostalgic connections. I just grabbed these out of the giant bin that's in my closet over there that houses all of these plushies, um, and I found the ones that mean something to me. So I'm gonna start with this guy right here. This is a, it's a great white shark, if you can't tell. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Right, I don't think that's any secret. I've made that pretty clear. 
But there's a city that's about an hour, hour and a half drive away from Louisville called Newport. And at Newport, there's a huge aquarium there. It's the Newport Aquarium is what they call it. And I remember the first time I went to the Newport Aquarium, I got this, uh, this great white shark there because they have a huge gift shop at the Newport um, Aquarium. And of course it's full of, you know, plush toys for children to buy and to beg their parents like I did to buy them uh, a plush toy. And um, yeah, I got this got this great white shark here. He's a little bit slack-jawed, as you can see. His mouth kind of hangs open like that, but um, he's cool and I really like him. So I've had this one for over a decade now. I don't remember the first time specifically when I went, uh, but I do remember getting this shark there. I think I was with either my grandparents or my aunt and uncle. You can tell he's definitely aged. Look at how his tail lays. It's supposed to be like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Moving right along, let's go to another vacation. Uh, when I was probably eight or nine, I believe, uh, my family went to Disney World. And to this very day, it is still the only time I've ever been to Disney World. It's been over a decade since I've been. I really want to go back. It's just really expensive. But I remember this plushie I got specifically, uh, it was a gift from my grandparents while I was there. I was there with them, but they bought this for me. Uh, it's a Mickey Mouse. You can tell he's from Disney World because of the Mickey Mouse logo on his shirt uh, with the American flag on it. And if you notice, yeah, he doesn't have any pants. Um, that's not how this plushie came. Uh, he had pants at one point in his life, but they no longer exist. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, I think I was just obsessed with taking Mickey's clothes off. I don't know, I was a weird kid. Uh, but I couldn't get the shirt off because his head's too big. So, so the shirt lives, but the pants do not. But it's still, it's still pretty cool. Uh, it brings back um, memories. Despite what my friends will say, they think I'm a Disney hater. I don't really hate Disney all that much. I like them. Uh, they made some quality films, and however, I do hold the opinion that um, a lot of their great franchises they just bought, like Marvel, Star Wars. They just bought those. Uh, they didn't create them. But I don't hate Disney. I don't even hate theme parks. I really want to go back there because it's Disney for crying out loud. But I'll always I'll always have this pantsless Mickey. <laughs> Here's a plushie that you guys have seen on the channel before. It's my big stitch. Uh, I showed this off in my HMR on the movie Lilo and Stitch. Uh, I talked about him a bit there. He can talk. Push. There's a button on his... Uh, on his finger here if you push it uh, he can talk I think I turned him off though because if you push that button and you start talking the plush will actually pick up the voice and start talking back to you even if you're not talking specifically to him so <laughs> uh, I think I turned him off but um, this is a really cool plushie it's a uh, it's a, it's a lot bigger than a lot of the other ones I have uh, the detail on it's really nice uh, I don't like however how the ears are pinned down. You can't actually uh, pin them up. Uh, well, they do have wires in them, uh, but it looks unnatural if you try to pin them up. Um, they're really supposed to be pinned downward, and uh, it makes him look like he's sad, and I don't know, I just don't really care for sad stitch. So I like having his ears pinned up, but um, it's kind of difficult to do. He just looks kind of odd with the ears pinned up like that. It's, I think it's really meant for the ears to be uh, pinned down, especially the way that the hinges on the ears are. So that I'm not too big a fan of, but uh, other than that, this is a great uh, stitch plushie and uh, I really like it. Don't remember specifically where I got this one though. I th it might have just been like a gift or something or I don't know, really. I don't remember how this Stitch came into my possession, but I was a huge fan of Stitch as a child. Still am a huge fan of the Lilo and Stitch franchise. It's one of my favorite films. Um, and I'm happy to have this guy still in the collection. The eyes are even plastic. That doesn't hurt you, right? No. Good. So let's see. Um, let's do this one. This is a Louisville Cardinals Cardinal Bird. If you watched the first episode of Collectibles Corner, you know I'm kind of a fan of the Uvo Cardinals, considering 
they play here in Louisville, which is of course where I live. And I've got that signed poster from Peyton Siva, one of the best players in U of O college basketball history. And I do believe that this Cardinal bird came from the KFC Yum Center when it first opened. Uh, the Yum Center is where the U of L Cardinals play. It's their basketball team's uh, home center. Before the Yum Center opened, they played at a place called Freedom Hall. Freedom Hall is still open. It didn't shut down or anything. It's over at the fairgrounds. Uh, but the Yum Center was built uh, specifically for the U of L Cardinals. And I think one of the first games I went to uh, at, at the Yum Center, um, I got this Cardinal bird as a little bit uh, of a fun gift, probably from my grandfather, because my grandfather uh, used to get season tickets to the uh, basketball games. Uh, he doesn't anymore, they're too expensive for him. He just gets football tickets now, but uh, it's cool that I still have this uh, Cardinal bird from when the Yum Center opened. You should recognize these two. It's um, James from The Odd Ones Out and Plankton. Yeah, these are some of my favorites because they hold some really nice memories of me and Hope. I've told the story about how I acquired Plankton uh, before on several live streams, but to any of you who have not seen those live streams, uh, it was Valentine's Day 2020. Hope and I were out. Uh, we had finished dinner and we were just walking around various places. We were in Meyer. Uh, it was really late in the night. We were both kind of slap happy. Um, I was in the toy section, of course, looking at, I don't know, probably Marvel Legends or something, and Hope spotted Plankton's price tag. He was underneath a shelf on the floor. She spotted his price tag uh, and his little um, antenna here, grabbed him, found him, ran over to me, said, you should buy this. And she's just holding this plushie of Plankton. And I'm like, I don't really want to, but if it's less than $5, I will. So we find a price scanner, Plankton was $4.99. So <laughs> he was technically less than $5 um, without tax. I didn't really specify. Uh, but he was less than five dollars, so I picked up Plankton and he became our adopted son. And he's a cool plush. Uh, he He's not exactly the right shade of green or blue or bluish green. I've been told by several people that they think he's blue. He looks green to me. Sorry, maybe I'm colorblind. Uh, but it's a cool figure. I do wish though that the antenna uh, would kind of stick up a little bit better. They kind of bend back in separate directions, so that's a bit annoying. And then James has less of a intricate story to him. It was another date that Hope and I were on. Uh, we were at Target and I was just looking around. I had the movie 1917 in my hands on 4K. I was gonna buy it. We then went to the toy section because I'm a nerd and we found the James Plushes. This is called a plush. So we find the James Plushes. They had a full set. There's only three of these. There's normal James, child James, and then James is a subway employee. Um, and I found the normal one because that's the only one I really needed. I picked it up and was like, should I buy this? And Hope was like, yes, of course, because she's a supportive girlfriend and wants me to drain my wallet on things that I don't need. So I imposed this on myself. I said, all right, I'm either gonna buy 1917 or I'm gonna buy James, because I wasn't gonna buy both because that would have been too much money. So obviously I settled on uh, James and honestly this plush is really high quality. I really like uh, how this feels. It's really soft, uh, really nice. It's simple, obviously, because James uh, from the odd ones out uh, YouTube channel's character is just a simple little marshmallow man and uh, this looks really good. They got his, the printing on his face for his smile is really good and um, I really like this plush. I had a quick question to ask you guys before we continue. Do you remember Pillow Pets and the whole fad that surrounded Pillow Pets? I kind of bought into those a little bit. I had a, or I have a Panda one and a U of L Cardinals one. The Panda one was a gift from my mom for Valentine's Day one year because it was a year that I was alone and sad. Uh, and the U of L one was a gift from my grandparents for Christmas. Uh, they're cool, I like them. Uh, I would never buy one for myself, obviously. Um, but I do have one here. It's a mini pillow pet and it's a, um, it's a tiger pillow pet. Isn't that great? I remember where I got this one too. Uh, this was actually a prize that I won in sixth grade. I went to Kings Island for a sixth grade like field trip type of thing. I was there with a buddy of mine. This friend of mine was notoriously competitive. He would beat me and pretty much everyone else at every sport that we ever played together. So I was like, man, I really just want to beat him just once. That's something. 
and guess what? There was a game uh, at Kings Island that you could play where you would shoot water into a target and you'd have to fill up your meter, you would play against an, another person and whoever filled up their meter the quickest won. Well, I played this friend, won, and got this tiger as a, as a free prize for that. And um, yeah, he's just really remained in my collection ever since then. He's a little bit um, flat because for a little while, uh, I, I think I like slept with him for a few nights in like sixth grade whenever I first won him. You can tell he's aged. He's a little bit flat. His stuffing is not exactly um, even anymore, but um, he's, a, he's a nice little guy and um, I like him a lot. This last piece is a little bit emotional for me, but I'll try not to cry too much. No, I'm kidding. I never cry. I never cry on camera. I just cut it out. I'm the editor. Um, this is a Schnauzer plush. And the reason I have this is because when I was younger, I had a dog whose name was Steeler, named after the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steeler had been in my family ever since I was really, really young. I think I was like five or six when we first got him. And he was just... He was the best dog, I'm not gonna lie to you. He was literally better than all of your dogs that you've ever had in your life. He does, your dogs don't even compare to Steeler. He was great. Steeler lived to be 12 years old until we had to, unfortunately, uh, put him down in 2018. He was just, he was so old and crotchety and really could not do anything on his own anymore. His body was just not holding up anymore and um, he unfortunately passed away in 2018. But I got this plush um, in, I think, 2008 or nine or something. It was when we went to Hilton Head one year. I remember we were in Hilton Head and we were in a uh, restaurant that had a gift shop in it for some reason. And that year I was really into spending money because it was right after my birthday. So I was like, I got all the spending money. And I found this plush and in all honesty, this looks pretty close to what Steeler looked like. So um, I bought it as a little uh, memento to Steeler because he he looked like this, you know, he had a similar color to this and the beard is pretty spot on. In all honesty, the eyebrows are really what get me on this plushie because Steeler had really funky eyebrows. We used to, we used to laugh about that. Um, he had really funky eyebrows, so I'm glad that this plushie has the same eyebrows that he did. And it's even got the little nub tail that all the schnauzers have, so... Yeah, this, this will never leave the collection. It just reminds me too much of dear old Steeler and, uh... This is just a really good piece uh, to rem to remember him by. So folks, that pretty much wraps up this episode of Collectibles Corner. I'm glad you all stuck around for the entire uh, video to watch me talk about different plush toys, stuffed animals, plushies, all kinds of stuff that I have in my collection and uh, listening to me ramble on about my past memories. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not already subscribed, I highly suggest that you do that. Please comment down below which plushie I showed in either the b-roll footage or during this segment at the end. Which plushie was your favorite? Which one would you like to have? Don't say James because James is mine. You can have Plankton, but not James. And uh, give me some suggestions about what you'd like to see in future installments of this show. I will definitely be making more episodes of this show uh, because this provides another creative outlet. You know, I like home media reviews quite a bit, but it's kind of constricting about what I can actually cover on that show. This show, literally anything is game. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, good night, everybody.